My name is Bob McQuillan, I work for Lafarge Scholson. Um, my job is to develop biomass uh, supplies as alternative fuels to our cement plants on a, on a global basis. So I've been doing that for around about 13 years um, and uh, the last seven or eight years concentrating in Africa. This project is focusing on two uh, degraded forest reserves in open states. So there's 108,000 hectares of, of land, so very, very uh, substantial land mass, uh, which only has 7% of the forest cover on it today. Um, the reason for this is because of degradation, uh, bad agricultural practices, or bad, bad uh, environmental practices over the years. So what we are trying to do with this project is conserve what remains and enhance the existing natural forests, which we aim to do so by uh, providing and promoting uh, smallholder farmer activities to give local populations uh, a, a real alternative residue, uh, sorry, alternative income stream uh, and, and to, to stop these, uh, these degrading environmental practices. Uh, that's the first part. The second part is we would like to encourage agricultural and forestry investment uh, in the area in order to generate revenues which will help to, uh, to, to, to finance the, uh, the, the conservation part of the project. And the key to all this will be using innovative environmental techniques such as agroforestry. So Lafarge Africa has been president in the Oldham State for about 55 years. Uh, we're a, we're a long-term corporate citizen. We've recently expanded our operations with a, with a third production line. Um, and in the last few years, we've been successful at developing uh, biomass residues as alternative fuels. Um, so what, what these biomass residues are, they're the, the, the non-useful part of agricultural or forestry production. So the part that is not used as, as food or feed or fertilizer we can take and valorize as, as fuel. And we see the Oregon State project as, as part of the, uh, of the development of these type of activities. So we can play a key role in supporting the agricultural value chains that lead to improved food, food security, improved agriculture and, and forestry production um, by using the, the residues from these, uh, these, uh, these productions. So I think there's there's two two ways it helps. Uh, the first is is really a technical way. Uh, if you if you choose the correct uh, uh, tree with the correct crop, you actually get a, a better production. So you get more out of your land than if you just have the tree or if you just have the crop. So, so, so that's the first thing. And the second one is is uh, financial for the farmer because if the farmer uh, now has more than one uh, revenue stream coming out of the land, it helps to really. To, to, to mitigate his risk. He's not exposed to price fluctuations uh, on, his, on, on one product uh, if he would be if he was just doing a, a monoculture. So he's got a more diverse revenue base. He can improve his livelihood and, uh, and technically he can produce more as well. And, and this is really well suited to the African environment where the majority of, of, of farmers are done on a small holder basis. And so, so agroforestry is really a, a key technique here. And, and I think what's really interesting about this project is that our ability as, uh, as Lafarge Africa and, and our energy needs and the forms of biomass we need, uh, we can really make a difference to an enormous number of, of farmers' lives. So it's, it's a combination of smallholder agriculture and large-scale energies. The critical thing is to have a, a, a very uh, a stakeholder engagement. We need to be able to understand the context of the, of the communities, it's a very sparsely populated area in, 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 on these forest reserves, um, but the, there are communities there, there are bad environmental practices that have gone on uh, in the past, that are going on. We need to understand the reasons behind that if we're going to be able to provide an alternative way of doing things and, and to, to discourage the, these practices. So it's really going to be 
key to having uh, to understanding that, lo that, uh, that local context, having a good stakeholder engagement, uh, and communicating really well what the aims of the project are and how it's going to benefit the, the, the local people. So I think that that's absolutely critical. Uh, the second uh, key success factor and stress is, is having really a locally adapted business models or, or productions. So these have to be uh, uh, crops, trees that local people are familiar with, that they know how to grow, that, uh, that there is a local market for, that, 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 we can, we can, that they will get revenue from. We can have a very innovative project, um, but if it's, if it's too, too different from what has gone on uh, in the past, if it's too complicated, then the farmers won't do it. So, so we need to have local solutions for, 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 for.